Hi everybody, my name is Rashni. I am currently in Vancouver and would like to acknowledge that I'm gathered that we're gathered here today on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Mosquium, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. I am very thankful for their ecological stewardship and the care the Mosquium, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations have put into standing this land. I am from Mauritius. It's an island southeast of Madagascar. Um, I spent half of my life there, so eight years, and then I moved to India, uh, where I spent another nine years. When I was a child, um, our weekend outings included going to the beach, and I used to stare endlessly at the ocean, hoping that I would see a dolphin or a whale. I was obsessed with them. I remember my mom bringing home crossword puzzles um, so that I could learn the different types of whales. Since I was five, the only dream in my mind was, I want to study this. I want to be a marine biologist. When I was 16, I applied to the United World College in India, where I got to live, study, and interact with students from all over the world. And this two-year experience opened my mind to so many cultures. And one day, a teacher gave a school presentation about College of the Atlantic. And from, that mo from the moment he said, humpback whales, I was hooked. And I was fortunate enough to receive a scholarship to attend this college, and this was in Maine in the US. This was definitely my new definition of cold. I had no idea what it meant to layer. <laughs> when I was at COA, I got the opportunity, um, a college at Atlantic, I got the opportunity to research harbor seals, gray seals, humpback whales. And one of my favorite places on earth is a small research station, which is 25 miles from the school offshore and it's called Mount Desert Rock. It is three acres in size. And on this island, you can find a variety of species of birds and seals. And my favorite part is that the marine mammals that swim past the research station. My most vivid memory is waking up at 6 a.m. to do a towel watch. And all of a sudden, I saw two humpback whales reaching, jumping in the air and this memory is etched in my brain. While I came to COA with the intention of knowing everything about marine mammals and it being my life journey, I discovered something else along the way. I learned more about marine conservation and grew more fascinated about the connection of people and the sea and understanding who are the people involved in the marine realm and how they connect to our oceans. And during, uh, during my time in Syria and after, I also had the chance to work and research in a variety of countries such as New Zealand, California, Massachusetts, Florida, Seychelles, and Mauritius. And when I was in Seychelles, I remember I was in a coral nursery, so that's where we grow corals. And all of a sudden, there were three devilries that just swam underneath me. For me, the beauty of the ocean just never ceases to amaze me. And with my passion for people on the sea, I applied to be a graduate student at Project Seahorse Lab at the University of British Columbia, and that's where I am now, currently doing my master's. I am currently researching the bottom trawling industry. Bottom trawling is one of the most destructive fishing gears. It's a weighted net and it's dragged along the seafloor and it damages everything in its path. And while ending bottom trawling is good environmentally, we also need to understand how it affects the people involved in the industry and the social and economic effects. And we also need to have fisheries management practices that are just and equitable for everybody. One of the most important things I have learned is that if we want to see change and facilitate it, we need buy-in from stakeholders. And in my case, that's the fishers. We must take the approach where we consider their values, especially the values of those directly involved in the industry. And the last thing I want to say is this. I remember when I was at an interview, the interviewer told me, Rashni, even if you don't have the grades, skills, experience, that does not matter because we can teach you that. What we cannot teach you is passion and love for what you do. So even if you feel discouraged when you're entering the ocean science field or if you're having difficulties, just remember your passion and your love comes out in unintentionally to your words and feelings and people are always attracted to that. Um, thank you for taking time to listen to me and please feel free to reach out. I would love to talk to any of you at any point. Thanks.